and he said something that I've never been able to shake as well. He said, what we are confronting with the crisis of climate change, it's impossible. It is beyond us. But on the other hand, throughout history, the most interesting things have been those moments in history when a people decided to do the impossible. And that is what we need to do now. It is in that spirit of optimism that I think we can begin to write a new story. Everything really at its core happens locally. And yet all of us live on the same planet. So we must simultaneously be planetary in perspective as well as local. What can we do to facilitate greater engagement by all localities everywhere to support localities everywhere? So our locality should support your locality and vice versa. One of the first things any political jurisdiction has to do in, in this era of climate change is do the proper diagnosis of the situation, you know? And very few political jurisdictions have done proper comprehensive diagnostic work in terms of how, clim how is climate change going to affect our political jurisdiction in detail, you know? Temperature-wise, heat wise, drought wise, sea level rise wise, property loss wise, et cetera. What it's done is to change our pronouns. And so our <laughs> pronouns for democracy are we, ours, and us. But for markets and for economists, it's I, me, and my. And we've got to change that. We've got to begin to give politics a priority over the economy. And the instructions are coming from we the people to the economy, not the other way around. And the third thing I, I would say, I would say this, uh, take money out of politics, let's, let's begin to. And so a good bit of the frustration is we dump all of these things on right. the government to do all of this stuff. And so it's expanded enormously. And then we've given it the power to fight wars. So in the United States, our trillion dollar a year, you know, quote, defense budget. Uh, adds a whole nother burden. There are so many experiments, however, that if you put things back down at the local level, the old subsidiary principle. Yes. So you yes. say to local people, you figure out how to power your community by renewable energy and turn people loose to do that. They'll do that. Yes. Uh, if you want local food, let's take some of the subsidies away from big uh, agribusiness and give it back to local communities to take part of the burden of feeding themselves back on themselves. And so begin to reduce the, the burdens on government. Government up here is to allow those things to happen at the local level, remove some regulations, provide funding, remove the barriers, uh, but do the things that government needs to do up here for taxation and justice and those, those things that only can happen at the very top. If you're, if you're sitting in Cape Breton, I mean, you're beginning you, and you start to do things, what you're uncovering is that people are the asset and that uh, the possibilities are unlimited. There's no reason for us to be poor. There's no reason uh, that our young people have to leave because there is opportunity here. There is possibility here. But we're caught. We've, we've been caught for so long in this other in this old story, and 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 the business of New Dawn has been trying to help shape another story. Um, a story, a story of faith and hope, um, and a story about a grand future. So I I think it's taken me a life a lifetime. Uh, a work to understand how restrictive the wrong story can be and how powerful the right story can be in terms of what I've always found is that when people, when, when people, when you get them engaged and they understand what, what they, what they need to deal with, or they become convinced they need to deal with it. There's a lot of energy there. And, and once, once you get that energy, um, who knows what's possible? Who knows what's possible?